Thank you. So a lot of people see the worlds of math, science, engineering, technology. They're very practical worlds, <laughs> very strict worlds, very one answer is correct worlds. But a lot of people underestimate how much creativity goes into these things, how much artistic talent needs to go into these things. So let's just go right to it. You see, in a film, it's very easy to see where all the creativity is because the entire thing was imagined by a single person. It's very easy to see where the creativity lies because it's all very creative. But let's say, take an invention like an oven, for example. There isn't really that much creativity in it because it does one thing. It does something that we've needed to do for a long time, heat up food. See, the problem with making an oven isn't what are we making, the problem is, how do we make this thing? What is the science that goes behind making this oven? But now that we're entering a more modern world, all the easy inventions have been invented. Leaf blowers exist, ovens exist. The problem isn't finding out how to make things, but the problem is, what are we making? Or what should we make? And that requires a little bit of artistic and creativity to do that. So let's take, for example, the Wii video gaming system. You see, in 2006, when the Wii came out, it was revolutionary, because before it, all video games were played with a controller. You took out a controller, and if you wanted to swing a tennis racket, you just press a button, and the character on the screen would you know, swing their tennis racket, very simple. But then, the Wii came out, and instead of pressing buttons, what you would have to do is you'd have to pull your arm back with the controller, and <laughs> <laughs> And it sounds a little ridiculous when you think about it, because why would I ever want to move my arm when I could just press a button? <laughs> and also, you look completely ridiculous when playing it. But then you play it, and it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's very fun. It's one of the best-selling video game systems ever. And the Wii is an example of someone thinking creatively, someone saying, what we have isn't adequate enough. How can we express a different type of fun. How do we make something more different and think outside the box? And in turn, the tools we use to make these things have also adjusted to fit this paradigm. So let's look at programming languages as an example. Now programming languages are the code that define you know, what's running on your computer, what's running on your smartphone. It's what makes up things like Facebook, Microsoft PowerPoint, et cetera. So let's look at a few examples. This is 6502 assembly language. It was very popular in the 70s and 80s. It's really complicated. <laughs> this is C. It's very popular still, but it was designed quite a while ago. A little more simple. And then this is a modern programming language known as Python. And so what you'll notice, if you know anything about programming, and if you don't, I'm about to explain it, is that all these programs do the exact same thing. They print the words, hello world. But in the first example, it's not very easy to see that because the programming language wasn't asking, what do you want to do? It was asking, how do we implement this algorithm to output these words onto the screen? Whereas the programming language that, or the code that's currently on the screen right now, Python, makes it extremely simple. It's in one line, while the other one was in about 10. And that's what I'm trying to say. The world that we live in has stopped asking, how do we do things, but what are we making? And now let's step back from you know, computer science and look at industrial design. And that's the process of planning everything, designing everything before you touch a single tool. This is a hand-drawn image of an engine. Okay? This is a computer-generated image of a fl frisbee-flinging robot. <laughs> they both look pretty impressive, right? I mean, they're both pretty cool. They both do really great things. But the image you're looking at was designed by Milken's own Michael Bick in ninth grade. And that robot was both designed and built in about six weeks. And not only that, but there are thousands of teams at schools of high school students making these things. You see, with so many teams, we stop thinking, how do we make these things? Of course, we still have to consider it because it's a pretty complex thing to tackle. But not only do we have to consider how do we make something, 
But we had to you know, brainstorm something novel, something that no one else had done, because we needed to stand out from the competition. If you're interested in this competition, it's called the first robotics competition. It was designed by the guy who made the segue, so it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> and you know, this is what I'm trying, you know, this is what I'm trying to talk about. In the modern world, we have to start coming up with crazy ideas that you know, might work. Like, take for example, Snapchat. It's a, <laughs> it's a program on your computer, it's an app. You take a picture of someone, and it lasts on the screen for about one to 10 seconds. And then it deletes itself and you can never see it again. Now why on earth would you ever want to send an image for one to 10 seconds and never look at it again? It seems completely ridiculous. But Snapchat is worth roughly $4 billion by some people's estimates. Or another example, is the uh, automated coffee maker, <laughs> my friend Al <laughs> The automated coffee maker my friend Alex Weiler making in our assistant principal's office. <laughs> and it lets you order coffee from the web. Why would you ever need that when you can just walk downstairs and turn the knob? You still have to pick up the coffee anyway. But someone needs to think outside the box. Someone needs to try it. Because if we don't, we don't innovate. And this is where the artistic ability comes in to you know, have the ability to, to see something that doesn't exist currently. And so the final takeaway I have for this talk is when you see an idea or you see a product that's being designed that seems absolutely half-brained, no way anybody would ever use it, and you see it, don't dismiss it. Because it's these ideas that when they stick, push us into the future. It's these ideas that when they work, when they touch on something that we've never thought of before, that we enter a more futuristic and we enter the future. Thank you.